So for the people that watch our podcast that might not know who you are, Mark, as me and Todd know you, as the guy that you are, why don't you give a little intro as to who you are and what you do? It, happy to. Um, so I'm going to take a page out of Alan Watts, Alan Watts' book. He said, and Alan Watts is the premier Zen teacher the West has ever known, and in my opinion, will know. He's just, he, he hit it. Uh, he said, above all else, I'm an entertainer. And above all else, I'm a storyteller. And I, I tell the story about how our words influence us for better and for worse in a variety of interesting and, and quite magical ways, really. Uh, and I'm also a teacher. Right after that, I'm, I'm a teacher. So I come from a teaching background. I have a degree in master's or master's degree in education. I was an elementary school sports teacher before I got involved in what we can call personal development. And I've been researching, coaching, and presenting on the power of our words and stories for the past 16 years full time. I'm one of the co founders and head coach of Enlifted, which is a couple ways to describe that. One, 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 one good way is a, it's, it's a school. You know, we, we certify people, certify coaches on how to, um, Help people shift their stories, how to dismantle the victim mentality. That's where the, the conversation starts and how to get their language working for them because most people's language is working against them and it's creating the insecurity, indecision, um, fe fear of starting, feel, fear of failure, um, fear of not going for it, fear of being seen. Those are, those are two – that's that's a fun juxtaposition. I was on a, a call this morning with um, uh, 20 – 20 coaches for the best hour of their day. And we're talking about how most people reside between the rock and the hard place of uh, uh, needing to be recognized and fear of being seen. That's, that's a, that's a, that's a, <laughs> that's a thing. And, um, and you know, what else we talked about, we talked about the victim mentality. I'm very happy to recite that by definition. We can play some language games. I can talk about, um, what I've learned in the past four years, full, full time, full time, the past four years of teaching, teaching. So teaching people to not, not just doing workshops on this certifying coaches, which has done a lot for my own personal understanding and practice of, of the, of, of the language language game. Cause it is that it's, it's a path. It's a practice. It's a craft. It's an art. Yeah. So I'm, I'm happy to keep, I'm happy to keep going in different directions. Like you guys just pitch no, me the soft balls and I'll swing. I love it. Cause it, I have a hard time with the elevator pitch as to what in lifted is and what this workshop is going to be. And cause you've helped me personally. I, mean, I went through and lifted level one, Todd went through and lifted level two. And man, that, when you talk about life-changing stuff to this day, the best certification I've ever gone through helped me so much. 2021 October 21, of 21 yeah. I got mine yeah that was a long time ago yeah so since then man you have completely changed my life so first of all thank you for everything that you do I'm sure you get that all the time right, we want and we want to take some of the things that you have done to help us and help the community so that's, that's where we're at now yeah you're, you're you're very welcome very welcome um you know this uh this work has done a lot for me, uh, a lot professionally, of course, gives me something to, you know, focus, focus my attention and energy on. And, it, um, because I find this work fascinating. I find it very interesting what happens when we, we think about our thinking, when we, when we, when we pick up a pen and write down the stories, even if they feel like they weigh 900 pounds, it's a 900 pound deadlift picking up that, you know, 0.01% yeah, that, that right there that, you know, how many ounces is this pen? Not any. Um, and, and writing that story out can feel like the hardest thing in the world. Uh, I'd rather do Murph nine times in a row <laughs> than, write, than write that one, then go into that story, then go into that story. And, and, and that's, that's what we do. Um, that's part of what we do. Um, and, um, It's done a lot for me personally too, because once upon a time I was a not a happy person. 
not a happy person and just staring at this one thing that happened in my life relentlessly and using it to beat myself over the head which and the thing I'm referring to is 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 moving over to Thailand for the Thai boxing and messing the whole thing up and having that second knee surgery. You guys have heard that story. You guys have heard that story so many times. And 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 um, yeah, I've been on 347 podcasts as a guest. I've told that story a lot. I've told that story at least 300 times recorded on on shows. Um, and so it helps me remind myself of of where I used to be. And how, how I used to be and how I used to think and how I used to talk and what I used to write before I learned about the power and the mechanics of my language. Most people's education about their language comes down to high school grammar, grammar spelling, and definitions. There's a lot more to it. So to that, let's, let's do a little quick little timeline, and then I'll, I'll bring you up to – I'll add this part of the story, which is an important part of – how I know this stuff works. So 2002, Mr. Tough Guy, fly over to Thailand, going to be over there for a year. Um, six months in, I jacked my knee up, have a second knee surgery, and my whole fight game stopped. And I, I, I was on a good run. Definitely, definitely, yeah. Um, and when that thing stopped on a dime, um, darkness descended. I took that scenario and used it as evidence in a case I was secretly making against myself that I'm not good enough. I'm somehow doomed to fail. And there's just something wrong with me. I don't know what that thing is. I can't articulate it, but I just, something's wrong with me somewhere. I, I, yeah. And it's very common. It's called a telephobia. Everybody look that up, a telephobia. And so the, so, and then I blew the scenario way out of proportion, which is very common. And I entrenched a victim mentality. And, and then, and then I saw something once upon a time in a workshop, I saw a woman go from, he did that to, he did that to me, to he did that to himself. And I watched her entire perspective get turned on its head. And I go that right there, that right there. Cause I had a, he did that to me story. He shouldn't have been kicking that hard. We we're just warming up. Right. And, and then that was the start of me getting into this stuff. So, so that was 2002, 2003, fast forward. So knee surgery, huge deal, end of the world level stuff. Fast forward to 2018, I, I go into a jujitsu gym after not training for, I mean, my jujitsu, it should be in a museum. It should be in a museum. I stopped hard, cold stop in 2002, right? <laughs> Remember that? 2002. And um, so we go into a 10th planet. I was with Mike Blood. So we go into, have you ever heard this story? Have you ever heard the story, Ken? I don't think I have with you and Mike, no. Yeah, this is a, this is a good one. Um, this, it was a before and after moment, okay? Um, so Mike and I go into a 10th planet jujitsu gym. Are you familiar with them? Yep. Yeah. So these get for everyone that's not, which I'm assuming is most of the people listening to this 10th planet. They do some very interesting things. They, um, well, yeah, I was, I'm just going to say it. They smoke a lot of weed and figure out new and inventive ways to twist people in different directions. So they're innovative, right? Look these guys up, look up Eddie Bravo. He's, he's just, the dude's a, 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 a legend. And, um, and so I go in there and we take a couple classes and we roll and, um, I, at the, at the end and I'm going with one of their guys who's was, was probably a purple belt. And, um, he puts me in something that I don't know what I'm in because I'm from the stone age with that stuff. And my arm rips out of socket, like good. And, and it made the noise. It sounded like Jurassic park and everybody stopped and he let go. And, and I looked at him and I looked at my arm and I looked at him and I looked at my arm and I went to my calendar. Of all things, I went to my calendar and thought, okay, yeah, that kettlebell certification it on it next month. I'm not gonna be able to do that because I just did something. And, um, and then we got paleo effects, which was this really cool health and wellness conference. That's in six weeks. And, you know, we got a small booth. It, it'll be easy to, and Pascal's there. She can help me 
run it. So that's okay. We'll, we'll, we can we can still do that. And then I go to Mike. I was like, "Blood, so we got to go because I just I'm on the insurance. I'm driving, and we need to leave now because something just happened." And so we walk out the the door, and I just I start talking about some other completely stuff. My arms flopping around, mind you. And um and I mean I did it, did it. Like I had to go get a I got a Tommy John surgery. Oh, yeah. And for those of y'all that don't know, no, I mean, it, it can't like the, everything exploded. And it's when they go in and they take some important stuff out of your leg and lace your elbow back up. So it's, it's, and, and it was, it was a minor deal. And you know what? I healed better from that 16 years later than I did when I jacked myself up in, in Thailand because I was breathing so much better because this story wasn't so big and huge and horrible. It was, okay, that happened. What are my next small moves? As opposed to that happened, and now here's the proof that I'm worthless. I mean, <laughs> it's, like, it's like that's what happens when people go into their story and start getting some of these. So how um, – what's the format for the workshop that you all are going to run? Uh, Todd, go ahead. Yeah, we talked about doing uh, – kicking off with some soft talk. Um, we okay. actually watched one of your videos of you and uh, – Oh, I can't remember his name now. You guys were doing like just sitting in a couch, just uh, doing some soft talk back and forth to each other. And at the end, you're like, where do you suppose that's going to get us? Not, not, a, not, not going to get us to dinner. It's not going to get us out to eat. It's not going to get us anything. Um, and soft talk is used way more than anybody ever knows, even recognizes. It's, it's that, that, that right there, folks, he's speaking the truth. There's this thing called soft talk, and you're going to learn it in the workshop. And, um, it's, I promise you, it's in your language. And I promise you that it's doing stuff. What stuff might that be doing, Mark? Glad you asked. <laughs> Anxiety, indecision, um, uh, uh, it, 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 confidence drainer, it slows things down. Um, a lot of times it makes us unattractive. Go, hey guys, go out there and ask a girl out on a date and go, do you think you might maybe want to go out on a date with me one day, perhaps? And just see, see what your yes rate is. Just keep it simple. Go out there and ask a girl out on a date with a bunch of soft talk. Guess, mites, maybes, thinks, sort of, kind of, possibly, hopefully, tries. And just and see what happens. One, you're not going to like saying it because it feels horrible to sit, use words like that. Because um, it just, it just, uh, uh, there's zero clarity. And if there's no clarity, there's no confidence. And and do like what? What's one of the one things that there's so much to talk about here, everybody? What's one of the one things girls always say they like in a guy? I like a confident guy. Well, that's a newsflash. They've been saying that for thousands of years. Okay, because, well. All the right reasons. And does any guy like feeling not confident? I no. I don't know any. And if I if they do say that, I don't want to know. Okay, just to get real clear. It's like and and um yeah, so okay, so soft talk. Are you gonna be are you gonna go into stories? Like go in there, four steps and stuff? No, not at the beginning. Um we're gonna cool. do uh well the soft talk detox, and then we're gonna set up intro sessions with me and Todd. Mostly Todd because he wants to do more of the meetings, and then that's where we'll dive into the story. I wanted to get into the soft talk detox because that helped me so much. I know I can help other people. And you had touched on a couple of things, almost the same verbatim. When you were doing story work, first time I've heard you do it, it was in Coldwater, Michigan at a resilience workshop. And I remember the line was, you changed, she told everyone to she told herself. And as soon as you did that, it was like, I've, I've only had a few light bulb moments in my life, but I will always remember that. It was like, holy shit, you just changed. You changed her life. You changed the way that she's looked over the last 30, 40 years by changing one word. And things like that, like telling stories and getting rid of that soft talk, breathing through it, and we got we to gotta get this out there. Fantastic. Um... Yeah, that I had, I've had, I had a moment like that in 2003 when I saw that. I was like, okay, something just clicked. I, I just had a cognitive shift. And so, what um, amongst the soft talk and the stories, and 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 so, what is it going to help you with? Every everybody, um, CrossFit gyms are, are are special places because 
And I recognized that the first time I went in the, into one in, in 2014, and then I did a summer in one in 2015, is, is that you know, people show up and they're adventurous. Okay, it takes a, it takes an adventurous person to learn all the the moves. You know, you're doing some pretty wild stuff that you didn't learn in high school PE. And then um, people are in there for a very good reason. They have a strong why. They know what they want. They want what they want. And they have work ethics. And they're also, um, you know, uh, pack animals. There's a, there's, a, there's a team. That's not happening in Planet Fitness. There's no teams, team, team spirit in Planet Fitness. And there is in CrossFit gyms. And I was like, I told my business partner, I was like, man, if we can get this in front of CrossFit space, I bet it catches. And it did. It did. I can go into the story later. I can, or not. We just went on a very important podcast in, in early 2017. Barbell shrugged, and um, and everything changed since then. So I understand the culture of a CrossFit gym, and and I also understand what what gets in the way of people in CrossFit gyms getting what they want. Okay, that story that people tell themselves before they go into the gym. And in the gym, look. Let's just get let's just get real here, everybody. The victim mentality. Uh, um, C four. What are the more what are the more popular um, pre workouts these days? What are the kids drinking these days? The powders. I don't know. <laughs> Man, I've been taking pre workout. I don't know. So back in back in my day, <laughs> it was it was Ultimate Orange and Rip Fuel and 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 Twin Labs and stuff like that. And, and mine was Jack Jack 3D. Jack 3D. Yeah. yeah. And and you know what? Those pre workouts don't have any. The real pre workout for the the fitness industry is the victim mentality. It's the stuff that we're we 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 go into the gym with and and um beat ourselves over the head like. You know, I'm going to, I'll show them. You're going to show who, who are you going to show? And what are you going to show them? It's like, I'll prove them all wrong. I bought a flag from Amazon that says, prove them all wrong. Prove who wrong? Everybody, all of them. Are they doubting you? Like, how do you know? It's like, and how are you going to know when they agree with whatever you think they're not agreeing with? Or like, I'll sleep when I'm dead. No, you won't. You're going to go home and sleep tonight. You know, I promise you. And if you don't, you're going to be miserable um, or um, go hard or go home. How about go hard and then go home and have a nice meal and get to bed early? So it's like the, the stories of, of pressure and relentless comparison. And I've been here longer and I they, they, they're farther along than I am. And and, you know, it's not fair. And, oh, it's just, you know, they're 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 lucky because of their genetics and like all. The, and then it just keeps going and on going and going. Um, those stories. Arrest people's breathing. Those stories trap people's breath in their chest. And cause a multitude of problems from distraction to, um, you know, gassing out early to, um, uh, you know, I mean, is, is it as far as recovery is concerned, are you, is it easy to recover in parasympathetic nervous system response or sympathetic nervous system response? Rest and digest, right? It's like, you know, go home and relax so your body can repair. And, and then so stories outside of the gym get in the way of it, too. You know, the, the, a, a lot of, a lot of times, I mean, there's a podcast about it. It's called best hour of their day. What, what does that say about the other 23? What does that say about the other 23? And, and those, the, oh, those, uh, those other 23 hours, which we're looking at stories here, folks, you're carrying the, the, the weight of that into the gym. Okay. And a lot of people use exercise to keep sane. They burn off that extra energy from all the stress and, and, and anxiety inducing stories in their personal life. And that's great. That's way better than other things that they could be doing with it. And I mean, if you want to have a, if you want to achieve your goals and have a longevity in your fitness and health practices, you got to address the stories and the words, which is underneath mindset. It's it, it, mindset. Oh boy, am I off on a rant and tangent. Mindset is this thing that is, um, it's great to talk about and let's do keep doing it and better. 
So when most people talk about mindset, it's this big picture thing that they know they need to get better at and how. And, um, you know, then there's that confident person looking over there and and I, I just need to read 10 more David Goggins books and I'm just going to bust through everything. And I'm going to I'm 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 I'm, I'm just going to be hard the whole time. No, David Goggins figured it out he even stretches at night, you know, because because guess what? It's, it's good to be able to upshift and downshift anyway. It's what is your mindset? What is it? I, I, I invite you to ask someone who talks about mindset a lot. What is it? Most of the time, if you even do, if they even do have a definition, uh, it's, 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 it's uh, mindset. You know, if, if they do have a definition, it's going to be some big philosophical clunky thing that's hard to implement. You know what your mindset is, everybody? Here it is. It's the story you tell yourself. And the story that you tell yourself about your relationships outside the gym absolutely influences your ability to perform and stay consistent and not eat three tubs of Ben and Jerry's ice cream when you're, you're at home. And, and I mean, there's so many ways that you can get in your way. How, and how do you do that? You do it with stories. You do it with stories. And those stories are built of words. And I have been, oh, my God, I have been barking about this for years, and I'm just getting started. I'm just getting started talking about how important the conversations that you're going to have with your, your gym members about their words are when it comes to improving people's mindset. If you have an imp improvement in your mindset, there's only one way that happens. You're using different and better words. People say that from time to time, you know, Mark, you helped me change my life. And then, you know what I hear in my head? I, okay, fine. I helped you change your story. That's it. When, when anyone has ever said that, you've changed my life, that means you've changed their story, whether directly or indirectly, that consciously or unconsciously, there are different words in there. And the fact, what y'all are going to learn, y'all are going to learn more valuable stuff. How long is the workshop? An hour, 90 minutes? Hour and a half. Hour and a half. You're going to learn more in that 90 minutes with, with these two handsome gentlemen than about your words and stories than than you learned in your entire high school career because most people didn't have even one class on how to use their language to keep the drama down or how to use their words to stay focused on what's important and build themselves up in their imagination and 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 how their words influence their breathing i mean this is it's so basic sometimes i wonder why i'm talking about it like I, I'm, I'm, I was an elementary school sports teacher. I've had a handful of MMA fights. I've got an IQ of 12. Why am I talking about this so much? It seems like it should be, it should have been sorted out so long ago because it's, because it's so foundational and relentless. I mean, how many thoughts have people had today up until listening to that? You've been thinking all day long. At the very least, you've been thinking all day long and the, the very, very likely you've said something to someone. And very likely you've written something. And so when I say language, I mean internal dialogue and external dialogue, what we think, what we say, what we write. Um, and then and then I also understand. I also understand that this is so close to home. It's really easy to overlook because look, 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 everybody. It's right between our ears, our thoughts. It's right under our nose, what we say. And it's right at the end of our fingertips, what we write. And it's just it, my the hey, these sounds coming out of my face <laughs> and these squiggles that I'm typing into my phone and this this voice in my head, it couldn't possibly be having that big of an influence on me. No, 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 no. The my answer, the answer to my problems that are so big, that answer must be equally as large. And I'm here to say exactly opposite and so go to this workshop everybody go in there with a pen and a and a piece of paper and a a a fifth of an open mind just a little crack in the door don't go in there with an open mind be skeptical go in there and 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 participate of course and and have an experience watch what happens and you be the judge okay you be the judge i've got a black belt yeah, in rants and good. tangents so yeah it's good good um yeah, I love that. Number one, you, I mean, you showed us what the problem is, and that's our words and our thoughts and our breath uh, and the stories that we tell. And then, better than that, give us the tools 
that helped us combat that. That's for me, man. I have that on lockdown. I hear self-talk. I know exactly what it is. I hear it all the time in the gym. Members are sick of hearing me say it. And, and <laughs> like they have to do something versus they get to do something. I say that on a daily basis. Um, Dude, and you had bust touched- their ass, man. It's lucky them that they get y'all to for 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 coaches. And and yes, I, I like mailing stuff. Turns out I love sending stuff in the mail. Um, you know, once upon a time, a poster showed up at CrossFit Angola of <laughs> someone that you uh, all know and love with a with a wig on, and and I I will, I will neither confirm nor deny that I may or may have been a part of that. Um, and I'm also happy. I'll do this tomorrow. I'm happy to send you all a stack of soft talk keyword sheets and a bunch of d- stickers. Sound good? Uh, yeah, that'd be great. Okay, so we're doing. I, I'm I'm I'm. I'm pinning myself down. I'm actually pinning myself down, folks. So it's June 6th. June 7th, I'm going to the the, the post office in um, Dillon, Virginia. I'm going to mail y'all. I'm going to mail CrossFit Angle a care package from them. And so you hand, hand out the soft talk sheets and say, put this up somewhere for 30 days and, and, and watch what happens. It's awesome. Mine's still in my fridge back in um, October of 21. Seriously? Yep. What what has happened? What's happened, Ken? <clears throat> okay, so let, um, I'll ask both of y'all this. And there's so much more. You're going to learn so much more than just soft talk, everybody. And and um, how much less soft talk do you use now than when you first started practicing? I'd like to say I don't use any. But when I do, I catch myself and fix it Dude, it is a game changer because mine, mine used to be, I think I might try to fill in the blank. I said that sentence all the time. I think I might try to, whatever, run a marathon, never happen. Take it out of you, take it out of your language and your life starts to change. One little piece of time. Awesome. He's, he's so right. I mean, what, what's, I think I might like, um, how many, how many times, so everybody knows you're, y'all are, uh, uh, Ken's one of the uh, uh, coaches. Todd, are you coaching there yet, or are you just one of their badass members? I'm just a badass member. Cool. Okay, so, and, and then people in your life, like in your social circle, they know that um, you're into CrossFit. Yep, Both absolutely. of you, they know. Okay, yep. how many times have you heard this? Out of, let's just say out at a gathering. Uh, I think I might want to come in and take a class sometime. Uh, I just heard it uh, Saturday night. I was walking out of a uh, restaurant and a guy stopped me. He's like, hey, uh, I see you at the gym all the time. I see you post stuff from the gym all the time. He's like, I think I might try to get up there. And I started laughing. He's like, what? I'm like, you're gonna never going to show up. Well, I said, why do you think you're going to show up? Well, I'm thinking about it. All right, I got you. I'll see you there. I haven't heard from him since Saturday. So. <laughs> And, 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 it, and in one sense, it's, it's negation and knowledge. It's not his fault because I guarantee you he doesn't – he's not paying attention to his words as much as you are paying attention to his words. Right, Todd? Uh, absolutely. Yeah. And, I, and so I heard – go ahead. No, you, uh, you go. go. Go ahead, please. I, read, I was actually reading something a little bit ago. It said uh, uh, awareness, comes, awareness comes first. You can't change what you're not aware of. Um, that soft talk is – just that if you're not aware of it if you know ken doesn't point it out or if you don't point it out or if i don't point it out or call it forward as chase likes to say um you don't know what to change it's 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 so true everybody and and this is all great news honestly because we can learn about our words quite quickly and it's 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 easy to start making some very seemingly minor adjustments and if that guy was able to go no uh, I don't think I want to come in. I, I want to come in. What um, What are the class times on Wednesday? What if he What if he asked you if What would you think of him then in that interaction? Uh, I would have uh, made sure I was here on Wednesday. What you know, told him four thirty or whatever time, and I'd have been here. Exactly. Exactly. Ken, you, I'm sure you've had people say, "Oh, you're in a, I think I'll probably. I think I might want to come try one out. Try out a, a, a session, uh, maybe." You've heard that before. Yeah. I hear it all the time. So, like, How many of those people walk in the door? Aunts, 
None. Oh. None. And and that's that right there is a very real world example. And you know what? Your members have had that experience too. Your members, people know in the in their community that they're into CrossFit. And they see them, you know, getting better and healthier and stronger and, and happier and having fun and posting cool stuff. And wow, that, I wish I could do that. And, and so they, and they, I'm sure you're, I'd ask that, please, if, if that fits into your curriculum, just say, hey, everybody, has anyone ever asked you when you're, you're out and about, uh, um, have they ever said, you know, I think I might want to give it a try one day. And I bet here's what I, I don't I don't know this for sure, and I'm pretty close that your members, a lot of your members, are going to be able to say, "Yes, I've heard that before. I've heard that way more than once." And then you ask them how many of those people came in. Oh, not many. Okay. Yeah, not many. Yeah, not many. Versus, hey man, you look great. Um, what's the address again? I've got off on Tuesday, and I want to I want to come take a class. It's like, so there's a, there's a way to use your words to talk yourself into the stuff that you know is going to help you have fun and live your life and hang out with cool people. Okay. And dismantle gossip, dismantle gossip. That's another thing. And, and stop focusing on the worst case scenario so much. My, my grandmother had a black belt in that. She just worried and worried and worried. And it's because she was using so many negations, can'ts, won'ts, isn'ts, nots, haven'ts, hasn'ts. So all, all stuff you're again you're gonna learn and you know with these guys and it is it forced her to stare at the worst case scenario um uh, i was working with this guy once and he he goes mark i can't keep focusing on my past and guess where he was focusing he was looking back into his past at a, at a handful of failures and uh he was miserable and me being the rocket scientist that i am i handed him a pen and a piece of paper i said write that sentence down and he goes, huh, which one? And I go, because again, I'm paying more attention to his words than he is. I can't keep focusing on my past. And he wrote it down. And then I asked a, a rocket scientist question. I said, well, if you can't keep focusing on your past, what can you start doing? And I, I mean, I watched this this morning on a workshop that I gave. Changing, changing the words, it sometimes takes a little, little bit of, um, it can be challenging using new words. And for this guy, it was too. He goes, he, had, he gave it to me in a half sentence and it went up at the end, which means up talk. F -f Focus on my future more? And I go, yes, now make a sentence out of it. And he go, it, it was like he was learning, take out the like, he was learning new English. You hear the breath come out. I can... <laughs> <laughs> I can focus on my future more. It was like one of those Babel online programs to learn another language. And then, and then he just kept repeating it until finally he could say it. Okay, I can. I can focus on my future more. And so now that we had him pointed in the right direction in his imagination, I go, well, okay, great. What can you do? And he knew what to do. He identified three things to do. He, was, he had a sales job and he was sucking at it. He would read two books, join the mentorship program, and go out for, on Tuesday nights. Uh, the, 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 the first Tuesday night of the month, everybody went out for drinks and socialized. And, and, and he did those three things because he could see them. He could see what to do as opposed to staring at the worst parts of his past. And he wrote me back nine months later and he goes, dude, thank you so much. My, here it is again. My life is my life. You changed my life. I'm like, dude, I didn't change your life at all. I helped you change one sentence. And it's, it's unbelievable. It's unbelievable that changing one sentence can do that much for people. And I don't expect anyone listening to this to believe me. Um, uh, if you go to this workshop that they're going to, which go, uh, cause you can if you go there, you're going to see people change sentences and you're going to see what happens when they do, because that's what's building up your mindset. What do you think your mindset is made of? It's made up of words and sentences that turn, get turned into stories. They get turned into themes. They get turned in. Yeah. And it just, it goes. And then finally the last, it's just the, it's the, it's the book of you. 
and you're writing it, you're participating. That's that's another thing. You know, let, let's look at the identity, the definition of identity. Webster's definition of identity. The fact of being who or what a person is. That's the definition of identity. And that's wrong. Uh, fact, the fact of being who or what a person is. And I'm not talking about what is a woman. Let's get out of that. It's just ridiculous. Uh, I'm, what I'm talking about is um, what most people would say are facts or opinions. Okay. Because guess what? Um, nothing ever works out for me. That's not a fact. Um, everybody's got it so much easier is not a unit of measurement. Okay. Um, you can't trust men these days. That's not on the periodic table of elements. So these, these facts of our identity, they're opinions. Like the stuff that's really kicking y'all in the ass, those are opinions that haven't been written down yet. And when pen hits paper, I'm a part of you is not going to like it. Okay. You know what? So what? Who cares? Part of you is not going to like getting these words on paper. Part of you is going to rejoice. Part of you is going to go, no, I'm, I'm, I, I can't be responsible at all for this dysfunction that I'm creating. No, please. And then another part is going to go, finally. <laughs> is, am I, I making that up or is that what no, happens? Yeah. I remember the day that me and you had a one-on-one -on -one talk. I went, and I, I'm not a big sweating guy, but I remember after the call, I went to the bathroom, and I had a sweat stain that went from this part of my arm all the way down to my waist. I was drenched. And afterwards, dude, it changed everything. So much better. So much better. I can't, I can't even put into words how much that helped. Oh, and the stories were up here, huh? The stories and the words were up here. You all got everybody. Everybody at Angola, you all got some gangsters, man. These guys, these guys are. I guess who I'm hanging out with this weekend? Is that Cody Ringel? Oh yeah, yeah. I we're gonna go, we're gonna go tomorrow. do a we're we're gonna go do a training together in uh, Pleasanton, Ohio. No, he was telling me about that. Is that the is that the gun training? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Yeah, I'm a, I'm a I'm a big fan of the power of the the pen, and then and then the sword. You know, it's a, it's a nice dichotomy, right? Yes. Yeah, so Cody and I were, uh, you know, we're gonna go do a, a three day three day training in in Pleasanton, and yeah, that dude, uh, that guy's he's it, uh, it it took me a while to figure out how funny he is, yeah, you because know, I was like, dude, you moved to to Long Island? And he goes, yeah, I'm surfing surfing every day and i go bro there's sharks out there and he goes yeah that whole salt water thing <laughs> it's just, it's, it was perfect it was a perfect response perfect delivery and um yeah he's he's a buddy he's a good he's a good buddy he is he's a good guy what else you don't want to talk about victim mentality should i do that or like what, what we got I don't know, Mo, when's the last time you said the definition of the victim mentality? I said it twice this morning. <laughs> I, say, I say it almost every day. I say it I almost every day. Yeah. So I'd say yeah. I, haven't seen, I, haven't, I haven't said this in a while, so I'll do my best. See, stop me if I'm wrong. Hit it. Vic victim mentality is an acquired personality trait where a person tends to regard himself or herself as the victim negative actions of others despite the lack of evidence victim mentality depends on habitual traits and i'm missing something i can't think super of. close so, uh, that was that was really good that was really good so we had we had level two class last night call four and we started with it it's just it's something it's i mean again how many times did you hear me say that on level one it was quite a few times. It's been a while, but it was quite a few times. Here it is, everybody, in all its glory. I'm, I'm taking a little bit out of the middle. Uh, and, and, and here's some interesting numbers. Here's some good numbers. 30, 50, 80. We remember 30% of what we hear, 50% of what we write, and 80% of what we turn around and teach or share. 
<clears throat> so if y'all are note takers, most people have never heard the definition of victim mentality, much less written it down. Um, and, and yeah, so if y'all are note takers, write, write this down. And then, of course, bring your pen and paper to the workshop. The victim mentality is an acquired personality trait where a person tends to regard himself or herself as the victim of the negative actions of others, even in the absence of clear evidence. You got real close on that first sentence, period. The victim mentality depends on a habitual thought process and attribution. So that second sentence, the victim mentality depends. It has to have a mm. habitual thought process. Habitual accurately implies duration and addiction and then thought process. What's a thought process? It's the words you use repeatedly. That is your thought. That's what a thought process is. So it's the words you use repeatedly in certain situations, different scenarios. Um, and, and yeah, so my simple mind, I'm like, okay, well, if there's a, if there are language patterns, certain words that force me to stare at the victim mentality or stare at, create victim villain mental imagery and trap my breath in my chest and create excess rigidity and tension in my body and, 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 and piss myself off all over the place. Well, what are they? Cause I want to know. Here's a, here's a language game that we played last night on level two and it got some people's minds blowing. Uh, uh, write this, write this sentence down or yeah, I'll put it in the chat box. There, there we go. I was thinking, how am I going to do this? Okay. Um, Can read that in the chat box. God bless technology. I am not seeing anything in the chat box. Chat box. Oh, oh, right. Okay, because I haven't sent it yet. There oh, go. there you go. I need to stand up for myself. How's that feel to say? Like I'm not standing up for myself to begin with. <laughs> okay, so so that that's that's what the picture looks like. You're not standing up for yourself, right? And then what kind of energy does that create? Negative, like I'm down on myself. And so we're taking out one word, everybody. That second to last word. I was wondering where that was going. I got it now. I I need to stand up to myself. Wow. What a, it gives you a different look at the thing, huh? The thing being us. What happens when you say that? How does that change things? Like I'm responsible for it. Yeah, it's up to me. And, 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 you know, if, when someone's like, I need to stand up for myself, it's, it's, they're going to see the, the scenarios in a certain way. Okay. As in there being someone's a, 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 a aggressive towards them. Um, and whether they are or not, a lot of times we over inflate things due to the words influencing our reticular activating system. Y'all need to know what that is. Go to the workshop. And, 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 and then we'll, we'll, if we do that, then we'll keep the same lens and then get into another situation. And, you know, everybody's, everybody's always against me. What happened? What, what would happen if I said that everybody's always against me? How am I going to see people? How am I going to see my people? How am I going to see my partner? How am I going to see my coworkers through, through a, a, a shaded lens? And everybody's always against me. Everybody? Okay, well, no, not fine. Not everybody. Some people. Uh, name names. I, uh, uh, well, I mean, you know, 
it's really only Dave. Because <laughs> because we can have one argument with somebody and then j- hyper jump off the Grand Canyon and 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 then everybody's against us, right? And uh, Dave's always against me. Always. Well, well, no, not always, but just he's been very argumentative lately. <laughs> Sometimes. See how it see see how it blows up our our language is we're at the edge of our the the the, the our ability to express ourselves. What do I mean by that? Uh, you ever heard somebody say it was a a mind blowing burrito, or it was the most it was the most in, incredible meditation. Or um, uh, 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 it, it was it was the 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 best latte ever. My dad, when he was growing up, he said he'd hear the word "incredible" about two times a year in the newspaper. See, it's about twice a year, and um, they would know when they saw these words that they would they would their attention would pick up. They need they they needed to pay attention to it, and us being us. We love a good pimp hand here at and lifted. So we just filmed our 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 um, third online course. It's coming out soon. And one of the lessons we talk about the blowed outness of our language. So when people use awesome and incredible and tremendous and mind blowing all the time, then they have no words to describe things that are truly that when they do encounter them. And we, <laughs> this is so wow. They go, we go, um, we, as in me, because I'm, I'm the one in the, the course, I go, your dinner party wasn't a total disaster. Now, the Donner party, that, on the other hand, that was a total disaster. <laughs> <laughs> and if you don't know what the Donner party was, D-O-N-N-E-R, look that up. Because there is no dinner party in the history of history. There was there was a bigger train wreck than that than, than that one. <laughs> Donner party. Yeah, and it's 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 you know, we have fun making these points about how how much potential and opportunity there is in learning about our words. And and so yeah, so look at this. I need to stand up for myself versus I need to stand up to myself. There, and most people that, are, that get good at standing up to themselves have a lot less uh, negative, aggressive interaction with people in their external world, world because they went in there and they did the inner work, right? Because a lot of times what we get mad for people about is the stuff that we're doing that we're not admitting to, okay? But, I mean, let's just be honest, everybody. Who's talked more trash to you than you? Has it, is there even a close second? Is there even a, someone that comes in slightly second place, kind of second place as the amount of trash? And so we'll just trash talk ourselves all day long in our head thinking it's going to help. And then somebody says something remotely close to it once outside of us. And now we've got – now they're the devil. Yeah, that's that's what people that stand up for them. And sometimes you, you got to stand up for yourself in certain situations. And most of the time, you know, the real the real actions inside, which is what this is for. I'm holding up a pen. Love it. Yep. We touched a little bit about uh, you know, Ken and I did a little bit before this about identity. You know, the, it, to get a habit or uh, to get a habit or a goal to stick, you have to. There has to be a change in your ident- underlying identity. Um, you know, where it gets, it goes kind of with the soft talk. He gets the guys that, uh, man, I, I'm overweight or I'm broke. I'm out of money. But if you keep, you know, uh, you keep telling yourself the same story about yourself to yourself, you're going to remain in the same book. You're not going to change that. You're not going to change a page thousand percent eventually you're going to get better at it that's the that's the that's the um exciting and scary thing simultaneously about identity so we, we've talked so much about soft talk today everybody let's keep talking about it so if somebody uses <laughs> a lot of kindas and maybes and sort ofs and and thinks and possiblys and hopefullys and i mean here this like come on I, we 
I've bought at least 35 of these boards. Okay. Just give them away. I, don't, I have one. And it's, I kept the one I kept is because it's got a little mark on it. Anyway, somebody uses those words and they create uh, a lot of indecision and they keep creating indecision. Eventually, here it is. Eventually, they identify themselves as an indecisive person. And once someone identifies themselves as something, they get way better at doing it for better and for worse. I'm really consistent. Somebody practices being consistent, okay, or they're on time. I'm punctual. Somebody practices, because it's a practice, being on time, eventually they identify themselves as a punctual person, and then they, they it hockey sticks. They just get better at being punctual um, or recognizing opportunity or shitting on themselves or, um, uh, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm good at um, – uh, I'm really good at bouncing back from setbacks. Okay. You do that a couple of times, you get yourself up, dust yourself off. And you're like, you get used to it. And once you identify yourself as that, you just get better at it. So identity is, a, it's a thing. And uh, yeah, the point, I, I love it. Um, there is one other thing I wanted to get your opinion on. We talked a little about breath today and and controlling your breath and getting your breath low and slow into your belly was another game changer for me. And that is the main reason that I still do ice baths on a regular basis. Now, we have a workshop coming up at the end of the month. We have a couple of ice baths in the gym. I want to make this a part of it. And I got a little bit of pushback on people either being afraid of the ice, afraid of wanting to do it, not sure if scared. But what would you say to somebody that wants to do the workshop but is afraid of the ice? Uh, what is what? What about the ice is scary? What What about the ice is scary? You could no. write it down, or or you could just get you, or you could just get online and look at, read all of the benefits of it. Listen, it's cold. It's gonna be cold. OK, and um, and by the end of the month, it's going to be summer. So we've done I've done at least 15 workshops with Brandon Powell where we combine the the, bre the, the, the language and then breath work and ice. And one of them was in cold water, Michigan in winter. OK, it's like I was, I was there for that. Yeah, yeah there was a gentleman were there for that. And um, uh, um, OK, yes, it's going to be cold. Will you survive? I guarantee it. OK, is part of you going to complain about it? Likely. But, you know, how many times do you go into the gym, the CrossFit gym, and you know it's going to be a really hard workout? You go in there anyway. Y'all are CrossFitters. You're used to doing hard stuff. And then and then, if you're still um, on the fence about it, read the benefits. Go online and read the laundry list of benefits of doing ice baths. There's that, that I was talking to somebody about that today. It's so in the culture. Of fit of functional fitness, like how many influencers do you see doing ice baths now? Oh, oh yeah. I mean, yeah. yeah, it's an interesting thing to do. Okay, as far as like social media and stuff, and if the benefits weren't there, they wouldn't do it. It'd just be weird. No, it's it's weird and smart. It's weird. It's uncomfortable, and it's smart. And um, uh, listen, you can make anything worse by holding your breath. Okay. Go to the dentist, hold your breath. You're not going to like it. You're going to like it less, even less. Um, go give a presentation and hold your breath. You're really not going to like that. Go out on a date and hold your breath. You're really not going to like that. Okay. Get a tattoo and hold your breath. Yeah. yeah get a tattoo. Get right. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I've got a little ink. Um, get a tattoo and hold your breath. Okay. Um, go, go, go home for the holidays and hold your breath. So it's like, if get in the ice and breathe, and if you want to be all psychopathic about it, which I recommend doing, smile and breathe because you can do that. You can get in an ice bath and smile and breathe. And part of you is like, like, why am I smiling and breathing? I'm freezing to death. You're not freezing to death. It's cold. And get, listen, you can, you can, you can, <laughs> you can stub your toe and smile and take a big breath in. And oddly enough, it hurts less. Just we're, we're trained, we're trained to, to tense up and tighten up and, and tell ourselves scary stories about stuff. And like, it's, 
it's all part of the domestication process. You know, people have been domesticated to a de- like a good degree, and um, and yeah, you're gonna do a lot of that, and it's fun too because you'll feel better. And then, and then, and then, and then, when you go home the next day, the rest of your week will be cake. You should be like, man, this is nothing compared to that ice bath. This is nothing compared to that three minutes of ice. That's so a lot. That's of why I too. like it. That's it, right there. Is that is one something challenging that I make myself do? To man, if I can make myself do an ice bath, and when I get flustered in the gym or outside of the gym, for that matter, nothing compared to the ice. Like if you can learn to control your breath. While you're in an ice bath, everything else soaks. He, he, everybody, he speaketh, he speaketh the truth. It's true. Thank you, sir. Uh, Todd, pleasure. anything else? We had about now. Yep. Nope. I'm good. I appreciate the time, Mark. Th- yeah, this sir. is. Um, it was. It was. It's, Todd and I stay in touch, and it was. It was good to see you on here, Ken. Um, and. Uh, yeah, everybody, I, uh, thank you for listening. And I super highly triple recommend going to the workshop because um, on top of everything else, you're going to have fun. going to be going to be worth your time. Good fun, 90 minutes. Hey, thank you, Mark. We appreciate it. Appreciate your time. It was good to see you again, man. Likewise. Thanks. Cheers.